Hello! What's up guys? Just trying a little bit different this time. Uh, I'm going back to this side of the camera because you can't see, but it's ridiculously difficult at this point to clean up this table so I can set up the review station. But who are we reviewing today? If you can't tell by the title of the video, we're wrapping up wave one of War for Cybertron Siege because... Wave 2 still isn't available anywhere near me. So, it's Ultra Magnus. It's his box. Here we go. It's the other leader that they released in Wave 1. Hey, it's Ultra Magnus. See, he's there. He's got a nice, stylized battle portrait of Ultra Magnus. I want to know if he can deal with that now. And I'm, apparently there's a gimmick with the box where if you have a black light, on, you shine it on one of the panels, it will give you like a code in Cybertronian. But that'd be cool for anyone who actually has a black light. So probably not kids or cheap ass collectors who might, who may or not be weird. Uh, on the top of the box, you just have the Autobot symbol and the Warp of Cybertron. Obviously, we saw that. Do, 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 do. It's a siege. And you got images of Ultra Magnus and Shockwave, who's sitting right here. But Ultra Magnus is here as well. Here And here he is. In his truck mode. And... Yeah, it's as basic a truck mode as you can get. Okay, the thing I love the most about this truck mode, first off, it is a complete homage to the R.I.D. Ultra Magnus, which is, is the Magnus for me. It's the Magnus I remember watching as a kid. I remember watching R.I.D. and the... The I think it was the uh, Ottawa Car Bros. They end up getting a power boost from Ultra Magnus unintentionally, but I remember I just remember that Ultra Magnus. He was such a dickhead. But yeah, th the only way they could make this more of an homage is if instead of the small Autobot insignia right here, it was a giant gold auto badge covering the blue. That'd be the only way it'd be more of an homage. But uh. Yeah, there's really nothing hiding other than the head. Like, you can see his arm sticking out right there. This is definitely the clunkiest way they've done Optimus Prime truck mode. And this is basically a version of Optimus Prime's truck mode. Now, when I remember, I remember when they first announced that they were doing an Ultra Magnus for Siege, and they announced the Voyager Optimus Prime... I honestly expected this guy to just be a slight repaint or a repaint and slight remold of this guy. But as you can see, they are very different takes on this on a truck basically. You can see there's not real we'll go into robot mode where you can see some of the things they did keep, but there is not much that's the same about these two. And apparently, this is the only Ultra Magnus that does the full truck becomes the White Optimus power-up armor deal since Generation 1. At least from what I've gathered. Because every other Ultra Magnus they've done has always been this just hides away in the armor. Like even like the Masterpiece, the one they released for Combiner Wars... They both just did the white, the cab white, but it just folded into the armor and didn't become its own robot. This because it's a, becomes its own individual robot, which we will get to. But there, there is some stuff we can have fun with in this vehicle mode by itself. First off, you can do a bit of a gerwalk mode, if you insist. And this kind of looks silly. But you can also mistransform it 
So you can kind of pull off a uh, Scourge mode, which is kind of appropriate given Scourge wants to get Ultra Magnus. This is that kind of brings this kind of brings it to its uh, foregone natural conclusion. I'll talk about more of the head, more about the head, in robot mode. But uh, also, we have a couple. We have some nubs for some uh, effect parts. You got one on each smokestack, and uh, one on each shin, and one on each shoulder, which we'll again talk about more in robot mode. But what would Ultra Magnus be if it were not for his car carrier? Which is right here. This whole giant thing. It, it's why he's a car carrier. Because of this thing. Because otherwise he's just basically a truck. So, yep. Here it is in its, uh, I guess, vehicle configuration. It has uh, weapon storage, which is very nice. You can store his shoulder-mounted missiles on it. And his big silver gun. Along with the obvious, uh, not for Ultra Magnus, these black pieces, which are basically guns. Funny enough, now that they've, they've already announced it and they've already released it in the States, but this guy is getting repainted to bring him full circle. He's being repainted into Cybertron Optimus Prime, which I so want to get. And these guns are obviously more designed for the Cybertron Optimus Prime, like from the TV show Transformer Cybertron, or like a, a Galaxy Convoy, if you prefer. Uh, yeah, you can see classic Ultra Magnus details here. It also has uh, four wheels, two on each side, along with the six wheels Ultra Magnus has. So he can wheel do, 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 fairly well. He can roll fairly. He can wheel. I don't think I've ever heard driving referred to as, well, I don't think I've ever heard wheel referred to as a verb. He can wheel pretty good. Maybe people need to start using that. But, yeah. So, how to connect these two is fairly simple. This gray piece right here has this little hook or U indent in it. And this in the middle of the legs, because he doesn't have a trailer hitch, neither does the Voyager Optimus Prime, but that little connector piece will actually slide right in to that groove. And you will also see these little gray tabs right here, one on each side, and that you connect the, oh, I'll talk about that in a second. You basically hook it up. It's a, like a C-clamp kind of deal. If you can actually get it to line up properly, or if you have it pushed back far enough. And it also, this little red piece here will also connect to the little spine that we'll get more into in uh, robot mode. But yeah. Ugh, come on you. Work for me. Work with me. Thank you. But there is your Let me put the missile back on. Oh, come on. What is You know, it I'm, I normally don't have that much issue with Ultra Magnus's uh, full vehicle mode. Something is, uh, oh well. I mean, if I wanted to, I'm not gonna be doing much editing to this because oh, I don't need, I don't feel I need to. But here it is, him in his full car carrier G1 slash RID mode. Very nice. Obviously, you can see right through it. Unfortunately. You, you can kind of see he's got a little bit of visible head syndrome. It's right there. You can see the silver of his antenna ears. But yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't do the proper car carrier gimmick because this is just one solid piece of plastic. You can't 
fold it down and stick a car up top. Technically, you can stick something on top if you want. It just doesn't have the uh, ramp feature. But, yeah. And you have multiple places you can actually stick. Oh, God. Oh. If my one complaint about the QC is this port right here is weak as, well, it's just weak. This one is actually solid, but the one on the left side, left, if you're looking at it straight on, your right, my left, it's just, it doesn't stay in there worth a damn. So you have this little, uh, for weapon options, you have this port right here. You also have this one right here. And obviously the guns are on their own ports so you could fold them forward if you want. You could stick the guns say in the holes in his shin. It doesn't look like they'll fit in this mode but you'd have to try for yourself to find out. But yeah, he's a very heavily armored truck which I like. Now if I recall personality wise as I unhook this Ultra Magnus basically in the G1 cartoon was like the uh, like a city commander like kind of like a basically a step below Optimus in terms of rank and when Optimus died in the G1 movie he wanted to pass on his uh, the Matrix to Ultra Magnus but Ultra Magnus couldn't deal with it so it ended up going to Rodimus instead, and I'm pretty sure they've there've been people have made jokes about that since. Like, even uh, I'm trying to think of uh, Thews. Uh, he reviewed the animated Ultra Magnus, who has the voice clips, and he's joking like, "We must return the Cy the Allspark to Cybertron." And he was like, "I want to know if he can deal with that now." Making jokes based on yeah. Okay, so. We'll deal with these in two different sections. First, we're going to talk about this guy in robot mode, and then we'll get to the armor. So we'll put off the, arm, the armor off to the side for now. So to get this guy transformed is very simple, but I still find it a little bit satisfying. Like, I enjoy it. It's a enjoyable simple. So fold down the legs. You can split them. You can fold out the ankle, the heel spur which is a very nice touch. And then you want to fold out these shoulders like so, and then come to here and rotate this. And this is my, <laughs> the funniest part of transformation for me. You can actually just transform him completely like this and I'll do that. So push this back onto this little rail, if you will. I don't have a better word for it. Flip out the head and tab in the shoulders. They just tab in right on that little peg right there. Straighten up the arms, rotate the fists, and there you have a white Optimus robot mode, which, which is, the, the jokes just write themselves. And honestly, at first, I was very confused by this when I first got the toy out of the box. I didn't understand because the the instructions were saying this has to move up because it's correct position you have to slide it up and to do it you have to push the body forward I didn't really understand that so I, just, I was just trying to do this this is what I was uh, trying to do when I first got the toy I was trying to force it up and it it just wouldn't go so you actually have to push him forward and it's the same thing in vehicle mode if you don't do this then the vehicle mode won't tab together properly and it'll be really annoying because you don't or at least in my case i didn't understand what i was doing wrong so you have to slide it up until it tabs at the top and that is the proper position for the backpack in the white optimus robot mode and uh yeah it's a good white optimus it's definitely chunky it's definitely chunkier than the, the Voyager Optimus, which I will have to uh, 
cut away to to actually transform him. And uh, I'll be right back for the comparison. Different day, different shirt. Move on. So, so uh, <coughs> so comparison in robot mode. Yeah, they're going for vastly different styles. These two. There's almost nothing on them that's the same. Like the, the only thing that comes closest to being the same is their awesome head sculpt, which is one of the best Prime head sculpts they've done in years. Like, Power of the Prime is definitely second, but that's because it's bigger, so it has more room to play. But this is... It's actually really hard to see... But their actual mouth plates are slightly different because the Optim Optimus Prime here, he has more of an angle at, let's see, at the top, like right where his nose is, where White Optimus, Ultra Magnus, has just a straight line. It's very hard to tell, but I just noticed it. It's like incredibly subtle. But yeah. As you can see, Optimus, this Optimus, is going for more of a skinny look with the uh, kibble hanging off him while this guy is just going for a chunk like everything's just thick uh, I don't have any he is thick with two C's possibly three uh, come back to the head sculpt I do love the color use with the teal mouth plate and Head crest along with the deep red eyes, the bright red eyes. Maybe I would have preferred some light piping, but oh well. Um, the only other really color it's bits of you. Hmm, I'm losing my words apparently. The only other bits of color besides the blue on this guy are the yellow for his headlights, which I forgot to mention. And obviously the chunk of blue on his back. But yeah, he's got an Autobot insignia right there. I completely forget if I did this before because I paused the video to transform Optimus. And then I tried to record this and my laptop was full, so it only recorded seven seconds. So, yay, take two. I've got to keep all of myself in the frame. You know, but, uh, yeah, definitely going for a different take on Optimus, which I like. I gotta love how the uh, chest is just the solid cab of the truck. Like, it doesn't even transform a little bit. And it honestly, it looks like this piece should fold down. And I've tried to get it, and it, you can't. But just, it looks like... There's a hinge right there with, on the grill. I'll put something else on the grill, though. Not this guy. Maybe a knockoff or two. Deserves to go. Uh, I don't feel like ruining. I, I wouldn't ruin a good barbecue on knockoffs. Turn this. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, he's got some teal on his crotch. I think I was just doing the articulation and the silver thighs. But yeah. Head is on a ball joint. Very nice range of motion. You can do the full exorcism swivel. It's very, a very good ball joint. He, he can put his head in quite a few dynamic poses. And I love how just the subtlety of bending his head down makes him look like he's really pissed off. Uh... If, I, if there's one thing I didn't like about the robot mode, it's how his shoulders are barricaded off from his chest. I don't really think that's a good look. And the shoulder pose ability is the one thing I wish they kept from this guy. Whoa. Because like this axis of shoulder motion gives you so much dynamic range that I wish every toy had this joint, whether it needed it for transformation or not. 
Because look what he can freaking do with his axe. Like, that's cool. Like, he can just put his axe around his back. Like, does he, even, does he even give a damn? Like, who cares? It's only violence. But this guy has just uh, forward and backwards and in and out under the shoulder. You can actually miss, uh, undo the transformation joint for a bit of this sideways, this, uh, I guess, Z-axis motion. But it, it doesn't look very good. It doesn't look as natural as Mr. Optimus Prime's. Does that have a bicep swivel on a mushroom peg? Good old uh, beyond 90 degree elbow joint with kind of like a, a cut in the gray plastic to allow the elbow to bend like that. You can do com cool. You can do some cool stuff. Good old. Uh, you can do kind of pelvic thrusting I guess if you want he can not quite cross over his body he can reach in front of himself but he can't he can try he just really want I just want to give you a hug um, and he does have a wrist swivel which is the tightest joint on him You, the bicep swivel is going to twist before the, the wrist joint does. I like to fold them down just for transformation. I don't know why. I don't. Maybe that's in the instructions. I don't remember. I just I just do it. Uh, waist swivel. Very nice. Full. Unimpeded. Because the railing, you can see, is two separate pieces. Which is a very nice bit of engineering. Hips are the only ratchet joints on this guy. And they are by far the weakest joints on my copy of the toy. Forward, they're okay. You can go about, let's see, from stock 90, or stock straight. Five clicks to, to forward. And there's enough space in between the clicks so you can position the leg and it will actually stay there that's not the weak joint the weak joint which one is it it's, oh it doesn't come into play in this mode but it it will see it more in the fully armored up mode where the hips just can't support the weight of his armor but otherwise you get a full full van dam Uh, his knees oh and yeah they actually uh, peg in to tabs on his crotch for vehicle mode bit knee uh, about just slightly under 90 degrees of bend give it good I'd say give it good 87 degrees maybe somebody wants to measure that just almost 90 uh, you do have a thigh swivel on a mushroom peg, and that's one unfortunate thing is this armor, while it does look good, it gets in the way of posability, because it's way too easy to just uh, hit it. This is probably from just an engineering, like a design, but you can't twist it past that or that without it going, whoop, off, off with his leg. Uh, and he does have a bit of ankle ankle tilt and a hinge at the heel spur hmm. one thing about this guy he does stand very solid but do his feet don't really stay straight you kind of have to force them because stock they're at this angle and then their other stopping point is at that angle. They kind of have to futz with them a bit 
If you want him to get him to stand straight and not, just like, not like out here. Well, I mean, if you want, you can put him like, then do that. But you'd have to go like out that far to make those ankles line up properly. Hmm. Posability overall, fairly solid. Everything feels good. Nothing really feels weak on the on him. Just like just this mode itself is worthwhile enough to actually play with as a mode on its own if you don't want to deal with the armor up gimmick. But we do unfortunately have to deal with the armor up gimmick. So before we deal with the armor we have to get this guy slightly prepared. You have to fold in the heel spurs and you have to basically put his head back in his chest. Unfortunately, no space for the Matrix. Maybe he can't deal with that after all. And you'll want to pull it forward and put his kibble back down on his butt because that's the only way you'll make room for the armor. Oh, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it or not, but he is a flippable crotch. And get that ready for the Ultra Magnus crotch. Or the uh, proper Ultra Magnus crotch. So we'll put him off to the side. And then we must deal with his car carrier. It does a lot of parts forming. That's pretty much its whole gimmick is parts forming. But we can take the weapons off. Put them off to the side. Come to the underside, take these bits, pull them off, put them to the side, take the this and put it off to the side. And you're left with this that you have to then get into its position by dropping it. So we'll deal with this section first where we can see the head. You fold this in, fold this on top and fold it down or you can just keep it like this and this is ready for the robot for the oh i didn't i missed a gun i didn't even notice and then this does a series of accordion folds to hug tightly around his shin so this piece folds in there this this section folds in on itself and then this one does a really smart thing where as you fold this it will slide and hinge right there to hug completely snugly to the shin, which is a, a transformation technique I very much like. It's something I don't think I've seen much in Transformers and it definitely it has it's, it's worthwhile. It definitely has its uh, benefits. And you do the same thing on the other one. And then you're basically done. Well, basically done. I mean, you just have to put it all on him now. So where are we going to start? Let's start with the shins. So they just, they basically clip into this and they also tab in here and yeah, oh, uh, I think I mentioned the things on his uh, shins. He has poor nubbins for effect parts on his shins. So you just slide it over until it's solid on there. Take the other one, and this one for me generally makes a click when it's uh, on. Slight click, but you could hear it. I, you might have been able to hear it. So then his legs are ready. Let's take his torso. I've got to show him, I have to show him properly to the camera. I'm not used to this angle. And you wanna take this piece and put it on the railing, like so. Fold this over and then tab it into those holes on his chest, right under his boobs. And you've got uh, halfway there, Ultra Magnus. He's looking a bit naked on the arms, but we can do something with, about that. Take these pieces and you're gonna to want to wrap them around the arms so that, come on, 
I swear, no. The, uh, this detailing right here, this uh, silver paint, is on the inside pointing at his body. And then wrap it up, and it looks like that. And we'll take the other one. Where did it go? It's still sitting right here. Take it. And uh, wrap it around and wrap it around. And plug it in right here. It'll, it'll plug into uh, that hole on his sh on his arm. Okay. Was I about to say shin? Seriously? Ugh. Will it? What the hell am I doing wrong? Let's see. Oh. Here. I don't know what. Ugh, excuse me. But then we need to give him his iconic shoulder pad. Which is where these pad these pieces mm, separate and you slide them over his normal shoulders like such and then this gray piece is supposed to tab into his uh vehicle mode connection uh connection tab where how his arms tab into his body but generally this one is okay at doing it but it, it likes to come unpegged while this one just doesn't give me anything at all it's just well not like it will not even go over the tab and stay there at all. But here you go. This is your Ultra Magnus for 2019 for Siege War for Cybertron. And we can see immediately the problem that comes with this full armored mode. His hips are way too weak to handle how heavy this shin armor is but yeah. he's got a lot more color now he's got a lot more blue he's got bits of red now and then he's hid away most of the white uh, you, you, but yeah the only we'll check out the new magnus head sculpt looking very good looking very g1 magnus with the giant silver antenna ears and the hole that is his forehead crest Nice blue eyes, although they're a bit sunken into his helmet, so they're kind of hard to see. But he has a very, very nicely silver painted face. But, yeah. Uh, this armor does a very good job of not getting in the way of posability. The only one I consider it hampering is his knee bend, but then, then again, on only like a couple of degrees. So I'd go like that, maybe I'd give that maybe an 85 degrees. Versus it was like 87, 88 degrees earlier. But other than that, it also gives him a new ankle tilt. Where you can tilt that far. And that's also a problem because the angles, the ankles are tilted like that hard. Where you have to get him basically sprawl, splayed his legs out just to make him stand uh, flat. Oh, and his new head is also on a ball joint. And so we'll give it a little bit up. Not a, uh, a little bit down, not as much as his old head did, but. And uh, no real side to side wiggle. It's a little bit, but not much. But other than that, all his posability is the same. None of it gets in the way. I do wish you did something to cover up the thighs, like make the thighs look different. Because they. they they're definitely the blandest part of him now. Because they just remind me of how much I like the white Optimus more than the armored up Ultra Magnus. So for ex Oh. We forgot. His iconic shoulder missiles. Which plays into the weaponation, weaponization of this guy. So you can't give him... I forgot to give his base form... But you can give him the big silver gun, which is iconic, I guess. You could also give him, whoa, one, one of these black guns. They each have a five millimeter peg for a handle. 
Now these are obviously for the more for more for the Cybertron Optimus redesign remold, but they also have a good place to go on his shin, and he can literally shoot from the hip. Like he can shoot from both hips. This is literally the definition of shooting from the hip. It is, it is the exact proper angle to peg on to shooting shooting from the hip. Now, did I fire seven shots or six? Well, in this all, in all of this confusion, I've forgotten my six. So you have to ask yourself one question: Do you feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? A pew pew, a pew pew, pew pew pew. And also on his shoulders, he has the effect part pimples. So I can just grab this one and say something happened there. Maybe somebody shot him on his shoulder stack. I don't know. He also has them, which they don't have a lot of grip, but he has them on his chest. So somebody shot him in the chest. Wasn't there like an episode of the Japanese cartoon where... Six shot killed Ultra Magnus. And like, I think I watched something like that, but not 100% sure. And as I was mentioning, he does have his iconic. I'm dropping everything. Everything's falling. The world is falling. The world. Was it? The sky is falling. The sky is falling. You can stick him in the ports on each side of his shoulder for that iconic imagery. Uh, unfortunately, there's no Magnus Hammer. I guess this guy got away from that iconic uh, addition to his arsenal. Because even the Combiner Wars one had that. You could uh, make shift a hammer out of the weapon parts. But instead, you have weapon gimp, the gimmick of this. The silver gun has ports on it. So you can say, attach the black guns if you want. I like to put them in the back. I like to put it in the back. So you can have a gun that looks like that. And then you can even take the missiles and attach one to each of the black guns. They are indeed big black cannons. And have a gigantic combination weapon like that. Or, for example, you can put the gun forward, the black gun, and then the missile really doesn't want to go. Because there's not much root. Whoa! Ho, ho, ho. Yahtzee. Ugh. And then have, well, that doesn't look very good. But yeah, there's a lot of uh, variation in play pattern you can have with Ultra Magnus' weapons. And obviously you can get guys like cog and i believe six guns in wave two or six yeah i think he's six gun is his official transformers name but the only one i've ever seen is uh was it perfect perfect effects for net before and after uh, before and after is uh six sigma their add-on for uh metroplex for generations metroplex but yeah Overall, this is a solid figure, in my opinion. Definitely worthwhile if you are looking for a classic Ultra Magnus that has to do the armor up. This is, uh, as previously mentioned, the only one on the market. Because the Combiner Wars one, well, A, I never found it. I never saw him anywhere. And B, he doesn't do this. And also C, he's 
more teal than proper cartoon blue like this guy. He just does the the vehicle uh, cab just folds into his chest, and the and the masterpiece one does that same thing where he doesn't even he just the cab of the truck just folds into his chest. But if he must have master this guy, I think is worth more like. I don't know if he's worth more than the masterpiece, but he might be on. Might, uh, it's hard to say he might be on par because they do slightly different gimmicks, but they're both good interpretations of Ultra Magnus. Like, if you want, I guess, masterpiece for the car carrier gimmick, then that's your prerogative, but this guy solidly does a full white Optimus with an armor up gimmick. And a variety of, like, a small amount of play pattern you can have. Now, the only thing is he's a leader price toy. Now, if that's the only way they can do this kind of armor up gimmick, then fine. But you're still paying for what is essentially a Voyager sized toy, but in a leader sized box. So take that how you take that as a factor i swear I, I love when i was looking for this guy in stores i could never find him i only found uh, shockwave ever it, it took me a long time to find an ultra magnus and even longer time to actually review him but as soon as i found him he showed up everywhere like everyone got a restock in of him and i just keep seeing him and i'm like damn it like, I'm glad I picked him up, because he's the only Ultra Magnus I have in my collection currently. But, like, I feel like everyone was just waiting for me to buy him, just so they could taunt me with the fact that, oh, hey, we had him, we just didn't put him out. And now we wait for Wave 2, which I've actually seen in one of a local retailer. So, Wave 2 reviews might be coming sooner than you think. There's a Comic-Con this weekend, and I'll be on the lookout for Wave 2. Especially that sound wave, but we might have some more Transformers reviews very shortly. But, uh, yeah. This guy? Definitely worthwhile. I'd give him a solid B. Verging on a B+. Plus. No, I'd give him a full B+. Plus. Verging on an A. Like, the weak... The weak uh, joints, these weak joints, um, uh, are one of the main things that are stopping him from being perfect. But, eh, uh, no, A minus. I keep changing my mind, but give him an A minus. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. Uh, be kind to each other, but also keep it weird. Bye.